Hey everyone, it's Vintage Vinny, and I have a haul video. I have a couple things from eBay, uh, a couple things from the thrift store, a flea market haul, and a couple of things from eBay to share. Before I get started, I'm sure you're probably noticing behind me that I have a headboard. Our furniture finally came in after about a month and a half, two months after ordering it. And I'm really excited to get this room all situated, everything set up, so that way I can show it to you. I'm, I'm beyond excited that it's finally coming together. I haven't really been out and about thrifting. I usually like to wait for the weekends to do that, but now that we have an extra car, if I have time throughout the day or if I just do an early morning shift, I might just go out and see what I can find. But today I didn't really feel like doing that. I wanted to get some stuff listed. I had to do this haul video, and I'm thinking I might just do my sales updates for August and September because they're going to close and go away if I don't do it now. So be on the lookout for that. That's probably going to be recorded after this video. Before I get started for the haul video, um, I do want to let you all know that I completed the original Tammy doll from, uh, I think it's from 1962 to 1966. It is portraying Debbie Reynolds, as I thought, because it looked just like her. The doll cost me three fifty. if you didn't see my last haul video. If you didn't, I'll link it up here. Um, and I bought the original outfit, and it cost me about 8 bucks. so I paid about $11.50 for this. Not bad at all. Uh, for some odd reason, the ideal Tammy dolls tend to sell well. I guess because she was a competition to Barbie. But hey, I'm glad I got her and she has her original outfit. So I got a really, really great amount of stuff to share with you all. Uh, one thing I do have a question for you all about, and you'll just have to let me know in the comments. At one of the Goodwills in town, I found these two Fire King bowls. Both fire orange and, I guess, hints of red. Um, judging by the bottom, I would assume they're probably from the 70s. I had one of these before we moved up, up here, and it broke while moving, and I really like the bottoms because it kind of screamed 1940s to me, but judging by the mark, and let's see if it'll come up, um, I honestly think it's more of the 60s or the 70s before Anchor Hawking and Fire King um, merged. So those were a dollar a piece, I didn't think that was too much to ask, and to go along with it, I found an awesome, excuse me, green mug. Also stamped Fire King. I don't know how well it's going to show up on here because it's white. Same stamp. That was also a buck. Couldn't pass that up. From uh, eBay, a couple things. Picked up another one of those Mutoscope cards for a dollar. And, of course, shipping. This one is titled Out on a Limb. I like that 50s background and just all the 50s kitschiness to it. Um, originally the person had it marked in their stock for $20. They may have gotten it at an auction, and this may have came from a booth or something. I would never in my life ever spend $20 on a Mutoscope card. I think that's ridiculous. They were mass-produced. Some might be rarer than others, but I would never spend that much on just one card. I think that's insane. Sorry, guys. Now, oh yeah, last eBay piece is something that I posted to Instagram. If you're not following me, go ahead and click the link down below in the description box. It's down there. I love posting stuff uh, vintage that I find and just fun stuff. This was a really, really good score on eBay. This is a 1950s, 60s Ross Bro Halloween snowman candy container. The only real things that are wrong with him is the fact that he's missing his pipe. And he is also missing a skull and crossbones that's supposed to be on the top of his hat. But that's okay. The cat's still intact. If you saw my post, you'll see that I only paid five bucks for this. Go on to eBay right now and look up 1950s, 60s Rosboro Halloween Snowman Candy Container. I'm watching one right now just to see how well it does. It's in the exact condition that mine is in. No pipe, and but the skull is intact on the hat. And right now it has a, like 28 bids on it for $56. So I got a really, really good deal. And I've been looking to have this guy for a few years. So... What made me type it in on eBay one day? I don't know, but I was really, really happy to get it for that price. Is my camera focused for you guys? I feel like it's not. I apologize for that. Okay. So, let's get into the flea markety stuff. I spent, with the stuff that I bought in an antique mall, I bought everything for about $100. Hopefully I'll make that back, because there are a couple things in here that I'm keeping. So, the first batch of items that I got at a flea market, it's about, I don't even remember, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 items. So that equals out to $1.66 each. Interesting stuff. Some stuff is to keep and a lot of it is to sell, but I'm really, really excited to share it with you all. So let's get right into it. Now, I have one question for you all in regards to something that is not vintage and I thought I'd share it with you all just to 
get you all's opinion on it. Now, I really, really took a gamble with these. These are, <laughs> appears to be Louis Vuitton. I know that that designer has a lot of knockoffs out there. Um, I took a chance because, again, at 166, that was pretty fair gamble. Um, this one has the V and the L, Louis Vuitton, Paris, made in France, like I've seen on all the other ones. This one has a serial number in it. It says LM51172. I looked up that serial number on eBay, and a lot of them, I guess, come up as authentic. Um, like I said, I don't know much about these. I know the authentic Louis Vuitton bags have, like, a brown interior. This one's got, like, a light cream color or tan, or maybe it's just really faded. I'm not sure. If I can't get the answers that I need, I'm, I'll take it to a local pawn shop and see if they can authenticate it for me. Um, have any of you guys ever sold knockoff purses before, either in your antique booth or in, you know, a vendor space, or even on eBay or Poshmark? Um, it also came, and I think this is a cosmetic bag. This one doesn't have much information to it. All it has is the Louis Vuitton Paris made in France. It's got the stitching and everything, but then again, I, I really don't know much about it. And I said I took a gamble. If they say it's um, a knockoff, if I take it up to the pawn shop and they're like, oh, it's not real, do you guys think I could probably get maybe 30 40 50 bucks? Maybe 50 is too much, but like just for the two of these, maybe, I don't know, someone has a, I don't know, wants to carry around a mini purse and a mini cosmetic bag. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you think. But I had to take a chance, especially when it was that cheap. I mean, wouldn't you? The only problem is, is I know that there are a ton of fake Louis Vuitton bags out there. Okay. So, I picked up some jewelry, and that's kind of out of my comfort zone because I don't know much about it. But I thought these were really, really cool. These are by Raffinati. They are Mercury Dime cufflinks, and I got two sets of them. If these are real Mercury Dimes, these might do really, really well on eBay. Um, I've sold some Mercury Dime jewelry before. I think I bought, or not even bought, I got them out of a dumpster from a gentleman who passed away in my old neighborhood. Um, I sold, I think, a bracelet and a necklace for like 40 bucks. So that was really good. It was 50. I can't remember. It was a long time ago. So I decided to take a chance on these. I figured if I bought the one and I sold it for good money, I would regret not buying the other one, so I just bought the both of them. Um, I'm going to probably have to do some more research, because if this is real, legit, Mercury Dimes, these will be worth some money. Along with the jewelry, I found a genuine Onyx hat pin. I don't know how well these do, because there's so many of them out there, but this one's in the original box. If this would focus, it would show, there we go, genuine Onyx. It's made by Carla. Um, judging by the color of the box, I would say this is probably 1960s. Um, I don't know. I know that hat pins were popular in, I think, turn of the century all the way up to the 1950s, but I could be wrong. Like I said, I'm usually wrong about a lot of my errors. I think everything's the 1950s. <laughs> but yeah, I thought that was definitely worth picking up. If I'm thinking maybe 20 bucks. But then again, that's just a guesstimate. Also from the same guy. Like, everything's in one lot here. I got two of these VU, VU, VU lighters by Scripto in the box. This one is a Hunter. And this one is a Golfer. Again, both in the original box. Um, in terms of price, I'm... I think I'm just going to throw these up for $20, because that's what they're going for, but, and they come with the original instructions. So that's that. I thought that was really, really cool. For Miss Stone Home, when I gather up a bunch of stuff, I'm going to send her these uh, Denison Christmas tags. I thought she'd like those, because I know she crafts with them. Found this thing. I know this is what the, I guess, the Motor Vehicle Association gave you when you registered your car back in the day. It's one of those little license plate tabs. I'm going to throw that in my jar of old stuff, because that's a little trinket that could get lost easily. Um, I got this awesome municipal uh, railway tin toy. If it would focus, you guys could see the great detail on it. All right. 
I guess it's not going to focus, guys. I'm sorry. This camera sometimes just does not like to do so. But yeah, it's really cool. I got another, um, if this is a train, it's also made in Japan. It's got a plastic top, so it's probably not that old, maybe 60s. But even still, that's just something that's very, very cool. Let's see if it'll focus. Come on now. There we go. Let me see if I can get the other one. So, let's do that and see if it'll focus. Eh, guess it doesn't want to work. Sorry, guys. In that same lot, I also got a set of um, girly playing cards. Sorry, ladies, if this offends you. Let's see if it'll focus on these. There we go. Now let's see if I can get it to focus on this. Eh, I'm still stubborn, hey? Oh, well. That was cool. There's 53 in here, so I didn't mind paying the buck 66. That's a good price. Um, oh yes. Not a very valuable piece, but I thought it was cool. It's dated 1928. It's one of those noisemakers. It's got a flapper girl on it. Now let's see if I can get this to focus. Come on now. You know you want to look. Come on. Stubborn, stubborn, stubborn camera. I guess that's somewhat better. And it has a patent date on it. 1928. There we go. Now let's try it again with the train and see if it works. There we go. Much better, right? Maybe it was just too close. Last lot, or last few pieces from that little section, or, yeah, little vendor that I bought this stuff from. Little ladybug toy. I don't think that's worth that much. It is stamped Japan, though. I thought that'd be kind of cool just to put out at springtime. I also managed to swipe a couple of compacts. You know what people would use, or women would throw in their handbags. Made by Dorset Fifth Avenue. I got two of them that came in the original box with the original paper. These are going to be a gift to somebody that I'm friends with who I used to work with at Home Goods. And the last bit of stuff that I got for that $30 is a lot of these clay marbles. I got a couple of shooters. They're in an old ball jelly glass jar, which I thought was really, really cool. Oops, dropped a few of them. Here are a couple of the shooters. Then you've got some medium-sized ones. I've never played marbles, so I don't really know much about them. And then you've got smaller ones like this. And I think there were 56, 57, or 58 of them. Uh, I might throw them up for 30 something dollars, 40 bucks for best offer and see what that does. Probably going to wrap them up in bubble wrap so that way they don't break. I thought that was really cool. I'd never seen them out in the wild and I know that they are collectible. Well, excuse me. Okay, so... Next item from the flea market, I paid $10 for the both of them. It's a set of 1953 shaving and makeup kits. They're for kids, of course. It's um, My Mary Dolly's makeup looked just like Mommy's, so they were $5 a piece. Um, as you can see, the graphics on this side are pretty messed up. So my mom's going to display it just like that. Isn't that cool? It comes with a little um, fake puff and makeup bag, or uh, lipstick, and then a thing of uh, powder. Put that back on here. So that's the makeup kit. The shaving kit is really, really cool. Just hope nothing falls out. So we got the dish for the powder, the brush, a pack of paper gem blades, and a uh, plastic razor. Isn't that the coolest thing ever? I thought so. So $5 a piece was a pretty darn good price. Originally she had 12, I offered 10, she took it, so I thought those would be great to display. Either in the bathroom or just in, I don't know, cabinet maybe. So I'm rummaging through some of the bags and boxes of stuff that people had, and I uh, spotted these. These were um, reproductions made in the 90s from 1995. 
Basic Fund actually made them, and that is a company that I remember. I used to get these for Christmas, and I used to look through the little catalogs that they came with, and I'd see different ones, and I didn't ever think I'd want to get the Barbie ones, but I did, because they're new old stock. They're the same age as me, 23. Um, I've seen them in antique shops, and people want like 5 and $7 a piece, and I'm just not willing to pay that. So it was $5 for, or the guy was originally asking 5 for these two and this little uh, Seagram's Gin lamppost. This probably came as a promotional gift if you bought a bottle of gin. These, uh, so I put them down, and he was like, how about four? Because he saw that I had put them back down in his box, and I said, how about three? And so, dollar a piece, that's pretty darn good. That's probably what I end up paying at the thrift store for these. Which is perfectly fine, but I love them. One is in an evening gown, and one is in the original zebra stripe bathing suit. So I thought those were kind of cool. I mean, me and Barbie, I mean, what the heck. So... I think that's everything from that little lot there. So I also got something awesome at a flea market that I had never ever seen. Or at least I've seen them, but people have wanted too much for them. My jaw almost dropped and I couldn't pull out my money fast enough. I got an original 1921 Autumn Girl Coca-Cola serving tray. I just posted a picture to Instagram. If you'd like to see the details better, go ahead and check me out there. So, this is in phenomenal condition. It's 97 years old. It is a little rough, and it has condition issues, as you can see, but it's, for how old it is, it's pretty darn good. This is actually a very, very scarce tray, and by that, I mean it's harder to get, and when they do pop up on eBay, they do go for a lot, or people do ask a lot for them. So, my jaw dropped when he said how much he wanted. Thirty dollars. Thirty dollars. Three zero dollars. I was shocked beyond belief because these people had a lot of old stuff like a lot of people do at this market. They were more dealer type, but their prices were okay. They had some good prices on stuff, and some stuff was like, whoa, but that's anywhere. I was really, really surprised. It wasn't priced. It was sitting on the ground. I had it in my hands for a while. I looked around just to show them, hey, you know, I might be interested. And the guy asked, do you have any questions? I said, yeah, what do you want for this girl? He said, oh, this is a really old one. I, I want 30 bucks for that. I didn't even hesitate. I didn't want to negotiate nothing because I don't have this one in my collection. I see tons of the reproduction, the long, elongated one from the 1970s. I see that on the market all the time at antique malls and everything like that. So to get this piece that's original, I, I was mesmerized beyond belief because I have been trying to get this one forever. Not that I haven't been trying to get the other ones forever either, but this one, the ones from the 20s are getting harder and harder to get, especially in good condition. If I were to put this up on eBay, I probably would throw it up for $100 or more, or just as a best offer starting point. But it's not going anywhere anytime soon until I can get one in better shape, even though this one's in already great shape. Let me know in the comments, would you have picked this up for 30 bucks? I know I would have, and I did. I would have bought this on eBay for $30 and paid the shipping just to get it here. So I thought that was a really, really good deal. Now, we did stop at an antique mall that was on the way home, and I wasn't expecting much because, you know, antique malls are typically a place where people go to resell and they look stuff up and then they price it ten times higher than what eBay would uh, charge. Funny story, I was actually looking through some of the showcases in someone's booth and I found the um, little orphan Annie and I can't never remember her dog's name or her cat's name, Sandy or something like that was the dog's name. It was a toothbrush holder, a bisque toothbrush holder that I had had seen before. They wanted 85 bucks. I picked one up at the Salvation Army a couple months ago for a dollar. And I love that thing. I, I was mesmerized that I even found another one. Um, anyway, it was good because I saved $84. I wouldn't have paid the 85 but win some, you lose some, and people can hold on to their stuff. I'm not going to complain about that. So I only got two items, and one was a complete dud, and I should have just freaking known better. But... So, you guys have seen the Coca-Cola pocket mirrors, right? Do you guys see how clear that is? I honest to God thought it was an original, authentic piece, but looking at it, it can get kind of fuzzy if you're not careful. It does say the Coca-Cola company on it, but I might have to look a little further into it because I think I see some writing on the edge. But it looks so clear, and the other ones just look so fuzzy and awful. I didn't see it in Coke's Petretti Guide. I'm going to have to do some more research and see if I can find out if it's authentic or if they even made them. On eBay, they don't sell for much. Someone paid $30 for one, but I think they just didn't know and they did think it was original. 
Um, if I take it to an antiques dealer and they tell me otherwise, I might go for it. But when I looked in my um, Petretti's guide, um, the most recent one is from 2008, and it's, so it's a 10-year-old book now. But I didn't see this one in there, so maybe that was a clear indication it was a reproduction. But it's so clear. Like, it's not fuzzy. Like I said, if you look at it, it's really not. It's... I mean, it fooled me. I only paid five dollars, which is not terrible. Um, but I've had luck before buying original things that people thought were reproductions, like years ago when we first found out about this other antique mall that's over by Treasured Vintage. Um, she had, or this booth had, three Coca-Cola trays in it. She thought they were all reproductions because the other two were. The other were reproductions of this one here. So she thought the Elaine serving tray was a reproduction. I paid nine dollars for it. I think I sold it for like eighty, and you know that just goes to show you that sometimes people don't know what they have. And this looked pretty authentic to me. And sometimes people do. They if they have a two reproductions of something like they did with that Elaine tray, they're gonna probably think the third one is reproduction. Same with somebody who has authentic pieces. If they find that two of their three items are authentic, they're probably gonna think the reproduction's authentic too. So you just don't know. It's it's a it's a vice versa thing, if you get what I'm trying to say. So yeah, that that uh, that kind of I don't know. I, I probably should have just looked it up, but I took the chance for five bucks. And the last piece that I want to share with you all is something that I was not expecting to find, and I've kind of been wanting one for a couple years, and it's been on my list of stuff to find. And I finally got one, and in a color that I like. Any of you um, '60s people remember these Lucite spaghetti lamps, uh, swag lamps? I was really, really shocked to find this. It was 25 bucks, but I also got a 10% off discount, so I paid $22.50 for it. Uh, please don't break the plastic. Um, it does need to be rewired, as you can see. I'm probably going to make it a plug-in lamp, and I'm going to hang it up in my bedroom. If this were amber or, like, guacamole green or avocado green, I would not have snatched it. But it's that awesome blue that I love, and I'm going to hang this up in this bedroom. I think I'm going to sell my Coca-Cola lamp from the 70s and just make some room for stuff that I really, really like. Not that I don't like that lamp now, but it just doesn't go with this room anymore. This blue one will. It is very dusty. I think it came from a garage sale or an estate sale because there's residue of a sticker on here. But I absolutely love this thing. I can't wait to hang it up. I might have a couple lamps in here. I'm thinking about putting my rain lamp in here and my... this one, of course... I've got some great stuff, and this is a really, really good pickup. I was not going to leave it behind for that price. And it even comes with a um, crystal chain. Again, I would date this to the early 60s, maybe the mid-60s into the 70s, judging by the color. Definitely kind of like a late Sputnik, mid-century era uh, light. I I have to... I'm excited to put this up. I really am. And I... I remember a couple years ago when we did the DC Flea down at the Dulles Expo Center in Chantilly, Virginia. I remember a booth had one of these. And it was like a white or something, or like a kind of like a coralish color. And it had different shapes and stuff on it. I asked them how much they wanted for it. They said 95 bucks. So I was like, ha ah, no, have fun holding on to that. So when I saw this one in an antique store for $22, I said, I'm buying this thing. This person priced it correctly, and I snatched it right up. So, that's everything that I wanted to share with you all in this video. What did you think? Give it a thumbs up, leave a comment below, subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget to click that bell next to the subscribe button if you'd like to know when a new video is put out. All the links to my social media accounts are down below as well, and thanks so much for watching.